Tour. The stars will come out to compete. Kurt Russell teams with Don Johnson in the Team USA, while Chuck Norris sets his sights on the checkered flag in the Popeyes, the winningest superboat of all time. From ESPN. The Queen Mary and Catalina Express present the 1990 OPT Long Beach Offshore Powerboat Race. The OPT Long Beach Powerboat Race is sponsored by Samsonite. Our strengths are legendary. Popeye's Famous Fried Chicken and Biscuits. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Aged, for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. From Long Beach, California, hello and welcome everyone to the second stop of the Offshore Professional Tour. I'm Art Ekman and this is Jim Hendrick. And Jim, it was endurance and reliability in the first stop last week in San Francisco that won out. Yes, but only for those who won or for those who managed to finish. We had a 90% attrition rate because it was the first race of the year, parts will get broken, and they weren't quite ready. I think they'll be ready more for this one than they were in the opener. Each course has its unique challenges and I think speed might be the one today. Yes, because 60% of this race will be protected by the Long Beach Harbor and they won't see the ocean for very much of this race. So they can increase their speeds, but they have to be careful. They better set a pace or they'll be back where they were the first race of the year. Now let's check the course. The fleet will begin the race along the Long Beach coast at Belmont Pier. From the start line, it's west toward the first turn at checkpoint number seven. After the turn, the boats head south past the Queen Mary to checkpoint number one. From here, it's east through the breakwaters to the oil tower and checkpoint number two. This is where the ride really gets rough. Once past checkpoint number two, it's a straight shot south to the checkpoint number three. After a short sprint, the boats will negotiate the turn at checkpoints number four. These closed turns demand the utmost skill and teamwork among the drivers and their throttlemen. After negotiating these two checkpoints, it's north to the second oil tower, checkpoint number five. The boats continue northwest along Seal Beach to checkpoint number six, and from here, it's back along the shoreline through the start. Making the final turn at checkpoint number seven, the boats sprint to the finish line off the stern of the Queen Mary. Each class must make a predetermined number of laps to complete today's course. Nine laps, 140.1 miles for super and open. Seven laps, 109.5 miles for Pro 1 and Pro 2. Thank you, Jim. Looks like a challenging course. Lots of different elements involved. Joining Jim and me today with a unique point of view, veteran powerboat reporter Dick Crippen. Well, Art, as you can see, we've got some great sights going here in Long Beach, California. We're going to add to that a little bit today, though. We're going to go high atop the fleet in the helicopter and talk about some of the action as it happens during the race. This is one of the best fleets ever assembled for offshore racing. It should make for a really great day. The day started off with overcast skies, Jeb, but by race time, we expect that sunshine to rule supreme. Well, our current temperature is 62 degrees and humidity, ditto, 62%. Winds southwest, 10 to 15 knots, and the seas 1 to 3, and as you said, mostly sunny right now. Jeb Offshore Racing has caught the imagination and competitive desire of some very famous people, and when the race is staged near Hollywood, the stars come out. Fancy cars and movie stars. Let's take a look. Some of the pre-race favorites now we'll be keeping our eyes on. In excess, coming off a remarkable job outlasting the field in the season's first race in San Francisco, winning it. Team USA, Don Johnson at the helm, a 50-foot revenge with power, but can they come back from a disappointing opener? Popeyes with Chuck Norris driving the veteran Bob Idoni at the throttle. Here are the few of the open class boats we'll be keeping our eyes on. Recovery, the 35-foot Jaguar with Stuart Hayam and Joey Impressa aboard. US-1 Special Edition, another 35-foot...
Jaguar that wants to break out for the lead. A father and son combination there. Chairman of the board out of Rochester, New York, Nore Sabunja driving the 39 foot Cougar. The crews are starting to focus. Last minute preparations are underway. Another quick study of the course. Double checks everywhere when it comes to the machine rate. And those going for the ride, getting anxious for the thrilling, competitive experience of offshore racing. The offshore battle begins here in Long Beach, California in just a moment. Back in Long Beach, before every major OPT tour event, the local and international celebrities have their turn. And the Monkees drummer, he was looking for the first race winner in San Francisco, Bruce Jenner. I'm going to have a good time. We're not going as fast as the big boys, but it'll seem as fast. Positioning I'm might so be scared. a scared. No. <laughs> Positioning might be a, a factor out there today with the, with the uh, relatively calm wa water. Yeah, it's probably true, but I've bribed enough people that that won't be a problem. <laughs> as long as I can keep Jenner in my sights. I'm after you, Jenner. Don't you worry. You think you're going to get away with it? Not you, Jenner, because I'm after you. And I'm going to rip you up in a little shack and take your motor and shove it up your exhaust pipe. <laughs> Mickey, just one of the many celebrities in these equally prepared well craft. Well, all the men are out there competing with the experienced throttle men at the side, but it's a woman, fitness expert Kathy Smith, who wins the race. How was it feeling out there? Uh, but see this, this little thing in my stomach, it's just, it, it ended up right around my throat in that first turn. But uh, again, with the, my, my throttle man, Hurley, he kept us under control. It's scary, the adrenaline is rushing. I feel great. A lot of laughs and fun, but now we get to the professionals gym and the various classes. What we're about to see, Art, is a race within a race. In offshore, there's a variety of classes competing on the same course at every event. Starting at the top, superboats. With few exceptions, you can throw out the rule book. Anything goes. Boats range from 35 to 50 feet in length. Multi-engines are allowed. Cubic inch displacement unlimited. And the cost? Ha! They can reach a staggering $2 million for an entire season. The open-class boats also range between 35 and 50 feet in length. However, most stay under 40 feet because their maximum restriction is 1,000 cubic inches with gas, 2,000 with diesel power. Primary difference between superboats and open? Horsepower. Both classes are always tough. Pro 1 division boats measure between 30 and 35 feet, run by double or triple outboard engines, limited to 900 horsepower, and they're generally kept stock. And finally, there's the Pro 2 class. These stock boats range between 24 to 28 feet with limited horsepower and designed to allow the entry-level competitors a chance to get their feet wet in offshore racing. There you have it, four competitive classes, four exciting races, all on the same course at the same time. Well, Jim, as you well know, not all the celebrities are content with racing just for the fun of it. Many want more, the competitive aspect, like Kurt Russell. Any butterflies, Kurt? Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm nervous to win today. <laughs> yeah. Last time I didn't have any, but today I am, yeah. Well, last time I believe it was Key West, wasn't it, over in the Popeye boat? Right, right. And today you'll be running against him. Yeah, I had to jump ship there. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really nice uh, of uh, Al Copeland to give me an opportunity to you know, introduce me to the sport. And then I, Don and I got together in Aspen, and he asked me if I wanted to join up and really take a more serious shot at it. And I said, yeah, absolutely. He started as a karate star, then became a movie star. The competitive Chuck Norris loves to race. All right, Chuck, you've been high-speed performance boats before, going against the clock, but now you're going against man against man, machine against machine. It's a little different story. Yeah, there's a big difference, uh, especially in speed, because on the endurance runs, you do about 70 miles an hour. Yesterday, I was doing 140, so it's twice the speed that I'm used to. Do you get the sensation of speed, though, in an encapsulated boat? Yeah, you do, because when you're that low to the water, you can see yourself flying along there. And uh, it's uh, what's really different for me is the, is the steering, is that the steering on this is heavy. You know, it's a heavy steering, so you have to really put a, some muscle into your steering, where with the uh, endurance runs, it's, it's uh, easy steering. A former offshore world champion, Don Johnson, has more than proved his effectiveness on the water. But he's off to a tough start this year. The crew's been working all night to cure the mechanical problems. All right, Don, since the last race, a lot of repairs to the boat. What happened? Uh, well, actually, it wasn't. Uh, it, there, there was only one problem, but it, it, it took out a lot of things. We, uh, we had a drive shaft break, 
and it beat up the uh, the, the rear motor and knocked off the oil cooler. We lost uh, lost one of the motors to that, and, uh, and then we put some new drive lines on it and uh, ripped them in half. And we're running a lot of uh, a lot of foot pounds of torque. Crew must be dedicated. They must work around the clock. My crew is just the they're the best bunch of guys. They 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 really uh, put their heart and soul into it, and I'm I'm lucky to have them. A great field of superboats in the milling area right now, getting ready for our start, Jim. Charlie Marks will drive Eric's Reality, Norman Gentry in the Gentry Turbo Ego, Chuck Norris at Popeye's Diet Coke, Jack Clark behind the wheel of Insatiable, the Deep V Superboat, Phil Mashinsky in the Lucky Strike. Team USA with Don Johnson and Kurt Russell in with Richie Powers, and of course Little Caesars Pizza with Pete Markey and Reggie Fountain driving the Fountain Hall, and in excess will be driven by John Garrett. Everyone in good position coming up to the start line. It looks like it's going to be a fast start. The pace boat off the course now, and we're underway from Long Beach. Charlie Marks and Eric's reality having a problem getting his up on plane, but Team USA, they're pouring it on. Great start for Fountain in his debut. In excess, the San Francisco winner is falling back to about sixth place, Jeff. We have one battle going along the beach right now, and you can see that the Gentry Turbo Eagles in the front with John Connor and back in second place is Team USA as they come down toward the Queen Mary. Oh, and look out. He spun it. He may have gone over. He may have gone over. He has. He did. He's completely upside down. Let's watch now, see if we see any heads pop up. Two drivers. Norman Gentry and John Connor. Look at the replay. On the replay. Slowly, you see it, it gets away from him. Hooks to the left. Really going into that turn quickly. Now he hits up on his side. He cannot correct spray of water and he ends up upside down. What a quick rescue though the Dr. Matt Houghton's crews, they've done a terrific job. John Connor, Norm Gentry, they're up, uh, they're talking in the raft right now. We'll have an update as soon as we can get to you. Meanwhile, Team USA, a catamaran, a Little Caesars, a deep V battle for the lead and we'll have more action on ESPN from Long Beach, California after this Time out. Welcome back to Long Beach, California with OPT Offshore Racing, our vantage point on the majestic Queen Mary. It was May 27th, Art, back in 1936, the Queen Mary was launched. Passengers admired its Art Deco charm, experienced the ultimate in service, and dined on the finest of foods. The Queen Mary regularly sailed the Atlantic for over three decades. In 1967, the city of Long Beach, California became the new and permanent home of this magnificent vessel and is now part of an entertainment center that includes the newly refurbished Hotel Queen Mary, live variety shows, unique shops, and an attraction centered around the Spruce Goose, that 200-ton flying boat designed by Howard Hughes. The Queen Mary and Spruce Goose Entertainment Center offers a great deal more than just exciting entertainment. Here, the guests are splendidly transported back in time to an era gone by. With the superboats already underway, the open class now getting ready for their start in the milling area. Let's take a look at the starting lineup, special edition with the Delias, Dirty Laundry, Joseph Mock there, an island runner, Frank Kerbick, the Gentry Turbo Eagle with Bob Kaiser, Stuart Hayup in recovery, the winner in San Francisco, Miss Warlock, then we've got Thoroughbred with Edwin Shear, Jim Duvall out of Long Beach in his Crimson Tide boat, chairman of the board, Nuri Sabunja. And the Sorales brothers in Don Q. Crystal. Ten strong, the open class now head on the start of their 140-mile competition run. Officially underway, the open class. The field is past that pier. It's critical right now. They're all close together. Remember what happened at the start of the superboats. Here's that turn that was so dangerous before. Special edition, John Q. Crystal, Gentry Turbo Eagle Recovery, all looking good. Island Runner and Warlock, they're having problems, Jim. Yes, but on the inside now is Don Q. Crystal. Juan and Felix Sorella seem to have it in their own way on the buoy line. They reach out of the one. Look at the Dalia boys. Come on, as J.D. the son pushes his dad, says, hey, dad, hang on to that wheel. We're going to the front. Great acceleration by Special Edition. Leaping just a little bit as they head out toward the jetty. Here's the start of Pro One now. And these boats are just about side by side as they come down. Risky business. Team USA, which is a teammate of the Superboat class, on it, P-70, high risk and first defense lineup for Pro One. 
As the race goes on, Pro 2 is underway. Here's the lineup. Six boats in all, great adventure, top pro gear, and misbehaving in that lineup, along with Split Splash, War Cry, and Gone Again. Good competition in this class. The hauls and engine powered pretty similar. Updating the super boats now. Charlie Marks just can't get that boat to plane. The former national champion. You know, he took the aerators off before the race. I wonder if that might have uh, been some of the problem. Either that or props, but he just can't get it up. Look at here. Look at this battle we've got going between Team USA with Don Johnson and Kurt Russell and the V-bottom of Little Caesar's Pizza. What a battle they've had since the start of this race. With the lead, Team USA. And two ladies on shore watching their men out there with more than a slight interest. You girls look kind of relaxed to have your husbands out there in high-speed boats. We were just saying how worried we were. Yeah. <laughs> we're really worried. <laughs> Goldie, you look like you have as much fun as... Oh, we do. We have a ball. We have a ball separately. We have a ball together. We, we have a ball, too, and, and we have a ball with them. And last, I have a ball with her. Last week, I asked Millie, I said, are you worried about Don being in the boat? She said, no, I trust him. <laughs> with the boat. That's ah, a good answer. That's a boat. good answer. <laughs> good answer. Anyway, we hope they win. That's yeah. all. Well, it'll be an interesting race. I'm glad they have those fireproof outfits on, just in case. Okay. The ladies relaxed as their men out on the water leading the race. Team USA, Don Johnson and Kurt Russell. And here we've got Popeye's Diet Coke. Repowered with lightning engines, they brought the old lady out of retirement and put the actor Chuck Norris in the wheel with Bob Idoni throttle man. And look at the intensity that we see on our onboard inside camera of actor Chuck Norris getting his first real competition in offshore racing. Boy, that shot really uh, shows you the strength that it takes to drive one of these powerful machines. Popeyes, Diet Coke, looking very strong here in the early going. Five superboat titles this boat. They put it away, they tried the other boat, and here they're back today, and they're starting to pick up. In excess right now, the Apache DP 47-footer with John Garrett from Wayne, Pennsylvania. And this DP Hall in excess with John Garrett and the crew won the first OPT race ever. It was held in San Francisco this year. And they're picking up some spots right now. Here's Insatiable, the only diesel-powered machine known for reliability. Barry Roth, the owner, he's on there for the ride with Jack Clark, the driver. Here's Phil Mashinsky's 45-foot Apache V, the lucky strike. Not getting that good of a ride today. They've dropped back to sixth place. That's after coming out of the chute in fifth place, but the real battle going on up front, Team USA versus Little Caesars. We'll be back with more after this. Welcome back to Long Beach, California. Art Ekman and Jim Hendrick with you. An update now on the Open Class Special Edition continues to lead the Open Class. In fact, they're running very strong. Most everyone expected a calm, fast race, but John D'Elia didn't agree. Inside the breakwater is pretty calm, but when you go outside that breakwater, and we're running out there about six miles, so you're talking about six times nine, 54 miles, I would say we're in for a lot choppier race than everybody thinks. Big, long, typical Pacific swells. I think a lot of the guys are going to like it, though. It's going to make for some exciting racing. So far, I don't think he's seen those big swells he predicted. He's cutting through them pretty fast at that. Second place in the open division, Bob Kaiser in the Gentry Turbo Eagle. It debuted in 1989 in the World Championships at Atlantic City. It's a state-of-the-art in design. It is most identifiable on the course, a true test machine for offshore racing. It took two years to turn Bob Kaiser's dream into reality. Kaiser's Open Class Cat is a showcase of high-technology powerboat racing engineering. The hull measures 40 feet down the center line, is set an 11-foot, 6-inch beam, has a fuel capacity of 400 gallons, and tips the scales at nearly 11,000 pounds. Both Kaiser and his ace throttleman, Errol Lanier, breathe compressed air during the entire race through a helmet apparatus similar to the type used by Navy fighter pilots. The new hull is equipped with gold-tinted, hydraulically operated F-16 fighter canopies to deflect water impact in the event of an accident. The business end of the new Gentry Turbo Eagle features twin Gentry turbocharged 351 cubic inch small blocks, which combined give Kaiser 1,800 horsepower. Coupled with this impressive power package are two artisan surface drives, ready to take the power to the water. Like a test pilot, Errol Lanier has an arsenal of gauges to monitor. The purpose here is not only checkered flags, but providing valuable data to the research and development department. All of the information gathered on the race course and in testing helps the team make decisions to improve performance. 
like this boat's been two years in the making and um, we've switched power sources and drive uh, systems two different times but we're quite satisfied with what we have right now and like anything else in motor racing or any other athletic event i guess it takes a while to dial your boat in you know you have to make those little adjustments that give you that extra three or four miles an hour at top end but still you can have the mid-range that you need for that rough water and we're trying to get the best of both worlds here bobby kaiser and now currently in second place coming down the long beach coast past the belmont pier recovery looking good they've moved from fourth to third very strong run for them after the open class win in San Francisco. Things are performing well. Our onboard camera here, Stuart Hayam on the right at the controls. Dick Crippen is up in chopper one right on chairman of the board. Here's a boat that's closing in on the field. Fourth place right now for Nori Sambunja. He is driving along with Hurley Step, the throttleman. The boat's name is chairman of the board. This is the only Lamborghini powered boat in the fleet. Listen to the high pitch of the engines. Watch the boat. This one is coming up. Chairman of the board almost lost it in turn two earlier in the race. Now they're running very, very strong. And Don Q. Crystal, after starting strong, they've slowed way off the pace, Jim. Yes, they're back here about fifth place, and they're bouncing through some rough water. Here is the thoroughbred, and uh, Bob Gallan and uh, Edward Shear. They were late at the start, but now they're moving up about a position per lap during this segment of the race. This hall, I believe, at one time belonged to Bob Kaiser. It was one of his earlier halls. And here's a man with a new hall, aluminum coup, catamaran, dirty laundry. Joe Mock, though, has gone through all kinds of frustrations today. Yes, he has. And, of course, he's got to get the new boat, the new design ironed out. It takes time, and I'm sure that Joe will do it before it's all over with. Isn't it interesting to see how high Joe is in that cockpit compared to his throttle man? The update on the superboats now. Team USA averaging 101.06 miles an hour. They're in the lead. How much does it cost to race a boat like this? Well, yesterday in the pits, Dick Crippen did a little evaluation. So you want to go offshore powerboat racing. Pete Markey did. He got into this boat, a superboat. Let's talk about what it costs to get into superboat racing. Sit down with your checkbook in hand. First of all, you're going to have to start with a boat hull. You can go either V or catamaran. $200,000 to a million dollars is a fair price. If you want to cut it right in the middle, half a million dollars. The power of the boat is the engines. Most catamarans are running up to four engines. $50,000 each, a set of four at $200,000. But then you have to have another set of four on the truck ready to go in. And there's usually another set of four back at the plant where they're being rebuilt. So figure $600,000 for your power plants. The stern drives help the boat go. They are three to $5,000 each. With four engines, you can figure four stern drives or $16,000. The propellers actually propel the boat through the water. They are $2,000 each. You've got to have at least eight props on board if you're running four props in the water, so figure $16,000. Now, the truck to actually get the boat to the race can run anywhere from twenty dollars to $100,000. Let's go in the middle at $50,000. The trailer that carries the boat to the race is about $15,000. And of course, you have to be prepared for things to break on site so you carry spare parts. That's going to run you about $100,000. In total, to campaign the boat, figure about $80,000 per race or about $1 million per season. And it all turns out to be a test track for the pleasure boats that we enjoy throughout the year. Here we are inside Popeye's, Chuck Norris driving, and look at the strength it takes to negotiate that craft. Look at, look at the determination. He's got his eyes riveted. Throttle man's handling the throttles. He's watching the swells, and he knows that he's in a race. They're very steady today. Just by checkpoint two as they close on the leader, Team USA. That new concept of four motors into two artisan drives working for Popeye's. They're catching up. Here's your third place boat, Pete Markey in the Little Caesars Pizza. This boat is the world champion, 1989. Getting a good ride, looking to go right off there in about 30, 40 feet, do a little chine walk that's going left and right and then settling down. In excess, currently, now back in fourth place. They've really improved since the start, Jim. They're putting it together right now. Insatiable, running in fifth now, that new 46-foot version of the uh, Jaguar Hall. The builder, Jack Clark, actually driving today. Here's the P-70 on it, leading in Pro 1. Nikki Kutro from Lake George, New York, averaging over 80 miles an hour in that wild chartreuse boat. Jim, they've done a tremendous job taking the lead, coming back from three spots. 
in back of the original leader. High risk, P71, John Engels and Rick Felsen. They're currently in second place, running strong. Also strong in the sport of offshore racing is Rick Felsen, kind of the spokesman for the group in Pro 1. Here's first defense. Russ Wilkin, the driver. Mike Novick on the throttles. Mike from the city of Detroit. Cutting through and over the water beautifully right now. P27, risky business. In fourth position. Well, they've consistently held that fourth position for most of the race. Risky business. Here is Team USA. Not to be confused with the Superboat entry. This is just another part of that team, but in a different class. Alan Shapiro and Dave Perry in the cockpit. Opening a big lead in Pro 2 now. Great adventure averaging 78.02 miles an hour. That's pretty good for the Gazelle boys. Now lead in Pro 2, the smallest class out here today. Splish Splash started out in 10th and they've kind of fallen off the pace, Jim. And we have another West Coast boat currently in this class running third and that's the War Cry. Getting a little rough ride there for their crew. Rough ride, but getting stronger as this race goes on. And this race will continue from Long Beach, California, for OPT Offshore Racing in just a moment. Welcome back to the Offshore Professional Tours race at Long Beach. A new leader in the superboat class, Little Caesars, averaging better than 98 miles an hour at deep V, leading the catamarans on flat water. How so, Peter Markey? Our boat is dialed in to run in flat water, but it isn't really made to run in that kind of water conditions. You're going to see the catamarans really run in high speed, and whenever you have a flat race, you always have high attrition, so you'll be seeing a lot of braking again here, just like we did in San Francisco. To this point, though, not so, as the DV looks so smooth. How about the differences between the two, Jim? To simplify it, Art, one haul versus two hauls tied together. Now, here's the DV. It's the ideal boat haul for rough water. That straight V-shape with the straights and chimes allows the boat to cut through rough water at maximum speed. Now, here's a catamaran coming head on. On the other hand, this kind of boat allows a faster run on calm water. The total design creates a lift to that similar of an airplane wing and serves to minimize drag. In other words, the deep V hull nice to the water. Type on the left. On the right, looking like an airplane wing, the catamaran, it flies across the water. That's the difference. Here's our leader, but it's getting a challenge. Let's go to Dick Crippen and the chopper. Here's the boat that's closing in on it right now. Popeye's Diet Coke. Chuck Norris, the actor, is driving this boat. His first run in an offshore powerboat race. He's done endurance runs before, but he's learning on the course. The boat's been repowered by blown lightning engines. Let's listen in on the intercom. I don't want you to get close to him at all. When we get going back, we're going to pass him. Okay. All right? You got it. Just let him go. We're eavesdropping on Throttle Man Bob Idoni's conversation with actor Chuck Norris. And Idoni's got so much great experience. Here is Team USA now slipping back to third. I think they would love to just finish their first race of the season right now, Jim. Yes, that's exactly right, because they did not finish the first race of the year, nor did they finish in the World Championships back in last November. In excess, once again, refusing to give up that number four position, a consistent race for them. Yes, this boat, of course, winning earlier this year, John Garrett, Ed Causey. Then coming up, an interesting experiment, the only diesel-powered craft in the race, the Insatiable. They continue to get stronger as the race goes on. Now, they're currently in fifth position, Barry Roth and Jack Clark. Lucky strike? Well, they're in back of the pack, holding it together to gain valuable championship points, I'm sure. And they're passing the Queen Mary Spruce Goose Entertainment Center here at Long Beach. And here comes our leader in open class. And get this, they're six mile an hour faster than the superboats at average speed. They started five minutes later in the start. Nuri Sabunja has taken over the overall lead with his international smartest board of a boat. My boat is like America. We have everything in it. Uh, the boat Cougar was built in England. And uh, we bought the Lamborghini motors because they are the fastest and the most horsepower. We have KK for drive, that's American. I have one of the best throttle men, Hurley Step, he's American. And uh, what else did we, and I'm Turkish. I used to play soccer in Turkey and the pro league, so we got a good combination here. Nuri Sabunja, former champion soccer player, would you believe? Despite number 55's performance, it's great. It'll be hard to shake US 1 Special Edition. Currently running in second place, they're steady. 
Sean Dewey and his son JD, they had the lead earlier, now are in second place as they fly off of some of those waves. You can see them coming right up on the front end. Third place, recovery, and driver Stuart Hayam got together with Dick Crippen yesterday before the race. One of the boats in the race has a very unique name, the name Recovery, but it has a very deep meaning to it, Stuart. Explain. Well, uh, I think probably as you've heard, I was uh, sick. I was diagnosed as having a malignant tumor in my spleen in 1979. Uh, I had surgery for a few hours, uh, six chemotherapy treatments. When I was lying in the hospital just after my surgery in 1979, uh, I was visited by uh, a young man who had gone to high school with me, and he himself had been sick, had, had cancer. Um, and I looked at him and I said, boy, a picture is worth a thousand words. You can have cancer and there are opportunities, not always obviously, but there are opportunities to get better. Uh, and, and really, I guess, maybe even more so than the fundraising, uh, the, the big picture, the big idea behind the boat is to, to show that story, to tell that story to other people. Um, and, and to give similar hope and inspiration where possible. And the good news is you look terrific. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Very nice man, Stuart Hayam in recovery, currently riding in third. Another great story, right now on the uh, water, first two open boats, of course, in front of all the superboat leaders, but also coming up and doing a nice job overall right here is Don Q. Crystal. Vaughn and Felix Sorellas, they're veterans, they've been around for a few years. Currently in fourth position and ahead of four superboats is this one right here, number 39, Thoroughbred. Bob Galan and Ed Shear teaming up. At one point, this boat was named Shear Delight after, of course, its owner, Edwin Shear. A lot of the local fans here in Long Beach, California, are really pulling for their local hero. He's from Long Beach, Jim Duvall in Crimson Tide. And Wayne Murray is on the uh, throttles right now in Crimson Tide, number 44. Here's Bob Kaiser in his new boat. Gentry Turbo Eagle, and he's off the pace quite a way, so it looks like he's just trying to finish with this one. Currently running back in seventh place, here's the only deep V in the open class, Island Rudder, Herb Stollard and Frank Kerbeck. That famous cigarette hull, designed by the late Don Arano, powerboat legend. Nicky Kutro, Mark Tagger, on it, P-70, leading a pro one over high risk, risky business, first defense, and Team USA. Nicky Kutro in the P-70. We'll be back with more action, OPT style, in Long Beach, California, after this timeout. There was an accident on the course while we were away. The S-7 boat, the Pop Pro gear, and the rescue operation underway. Paramedics trying to do their job right now. We'll be back to you with the latest information as it becomes available. Chuck Norris is leading now in the Popeye's Chicken 84.22 mile an hour average. Why do celebrities like Chuck Norris enter into the world of speed and competition? I think it's just a matter of finding the sport that you enjoy doing, because I did off-road racing for five years. And now that I've got back into offshore racing, it's the same thrill that I had when I was doing off-road racing. It's just speed, it's no matter, just picking the sport that you like to do. And uh, now uh, offshore racing is my, uh, my excitement. Well, if being out in front means excitement, he's got to be very excited right now as Chuck Norris and the Popeye's Diet Coke leads this machine, Little Caesar's Pizza. Little Caesar's Pizza, though, is still in the hunt. That deep V bottom working very well. Yes, they're currently in second place, and they, they've been steady. That hull is really looking good. Here's our third place boat in excess. John Garrett, Ed Cozzi, and uh, these two guys, along with their navigator, just uh, going for a ride about now. Three 850 horsepower engines. Team USA with four 1,000 horsepower engines. This race is proving a horsepower isn't the only answer, Jim. You're right. Here's Insatiable. Fifth place at the bottom of your screen. Being passed by the red boat, Dirty Laundry. That's Joe Mock. He's got it running better than he did earlier in the day. Good shot of the speed involved here as they get closer and closer. Uh, Jim, they're getting pretty close Somebody now. Somebody better watch out. Look out, you guys. Looks like they both wanted the same line, and Insatiable draws back at the last second. That Near could miss. have been very serious, very serious, Art. Lucky strike, having bad luck all day long. They're hanging in there for the points right now. Here is the update on the open class. It's number 55, chairman of the board, Nuri Sabuja, averaging better than 90 miles an hour. A team from Rochester, New York. It's the only Lamborghini-powered powerboat in this race. Chairman of the board and special edition, two of the most effective machines in this race, even more so than the big boats. This could tell us a lot as far as water conditions and the weight of these boats, Jim. 
That is for sure. This is a fine boat, special edition. Seen a lot of good checkered flags, and they're still in the hunt here today. Third place, Don Q. Crystal. And a good shot of their Mercury number no. five drives, the Soralises from Puerto Rico. They're the former world and national pro stock champions of last year. Don Q. Crystal is doing fine today. Stuart Hayam in the recovery boat has dropped back to fourth place now. Joey Impressia is the throttle man. He's on the left as we looked at our inboard camera. The man with hands on both wheels is the driver, Hayam. Good shot from the helicopter right there. Edwin Shear in thoroughbred, that 38-foot Cougar Cat. A dependable Cougar Cat driven by Bob Kaiser when it was systems. He owned and drove it to a national championship. Here's the smallest boat in the class, Crimson Tide from Long Beach, California, driven by two 550 horsepower Chevy engines, and they're looking strong right now. The brand new Dirty Laundry red boat owned by Joe Mock is currently seventh. Let's go up and check on Pro One and Dick Crippen. Dick? Nicky Kutro out of Lake George, New York. This is a gentleman leading in Pro One, 96.29 miles per hour. That's actually faster than the two classes ahead of him. Nicky's an advocate of the race against drugs. Now, this guy knows what it's like to come to the finish line and lose. He ran out of gas in Key West just a couple of years ago. Nicky Kutro. Risky business moving up in the pack now. They started at third, and now they're up to second. It's been a very consistent performance. Looks like the water a little bit choppy right there, Jim. Yes, it is. You have to watch. Here's high risk. P71 currently in third place, just about 20 seconds off the pace of the second place boat. And first offense, P555 holding on to that fourth place position. They had that boat on the rocks in San Francisco. They're glad to stay on the water today. Splish splash. As we go to the Pro 2, they're averaging 55, better than 55 miles an hour. Splish splash, Great Adventure, War Cry 1, 2, 3 in Pro 2, and lots of fans around in the stands today. And Jim, that's one thing I like about the OPT emphasis. They're bringing the sport to the fans. Lots of wonderful vantage points on the courses that they map out. We're looking at Bob Idoni on the throttles, Chuck Norris at the wheel, the chicken chopper above as the leader in Superboat is the number 13 Popeyes. We'll be back with more action from Long Beach, California in just a moment. Welcome back to Long Beach. Art Ekman, Jim Hendrick, Dick Crippen, a large contingent of fans enjoying the vantage point from the Queen Mary, Dick Crippen's vantage point, the copter. Here's one of the boats being towed in right now. Let's talk about attrition on the course. Eric's Reality, Gentry Turbo Eagle, Lucky Strike, and Reggie Fountain's boat out of North Carolina in the open class Island Runner and Miss Warlock. In the Pro 1, the boat you see right there, Team USA, the P-51, and Pro 2, Pop Pro Gear, Misbehaving, and Gone Again. And there you see the Gentry Turbo Eagle. John, Connor, and Norm Gentry are okay. They're out of the boat being taken to the checkpoint on shore. They will be checked over, possibly taken to the hospital, to be sure. No official report yet on the wreck from the S-7 boat. They've left that craft just like that. It's out of the way, out of the racer's way, as we update the Pro 2 division right now. Great adventure, Bill Gazelle. Splish Splash and War Cry, your one, two, and three boats. So while we have a new leader in Pro 2, P-70, Nicky Cutro in on it, maintains his lead at 66 plus mile an hour in Pro 1, followed by Risky Business, High Risk, and First Defense. And in the open class, chairman of the board, those Lamborghini engines, Singing along at 107.07 miles an hour. That's the fastest on the water today. Now, this is the best that this boat has run for a few races. I mean, they are really just laying it out there. Here's US-1 Special Edition as we look at the drive in the back there and pull back to see those in the cockpit. A steady haul Special Edition. That's why they wear US-1, significant of the fact that they're national champions from 89. Almost had a new boat this year, but decided to stay with this haul. With this division really loves the water conditions right now. They told us on the radios that some are having some little oil pressure problems, but it doesn't seem to be hurting now as we zoom into the stern drive of recovery. This boat has moved up the third over this one, the fourth place boat. Don Q. Crystal has dropped back. So chairman of the board, special edition recovery, and we're looking at our fourth place boat in open class Don Q. Crystal. And then comes Thoroughbred and Crimson Tide as they have a close battle going on right here. Crimson Tide, you see in the red and white, losing that battle to Thoroughbred. Jim Duvall from Long Beach, California, the driver and owner. Wayne Murray from Torrance, California on the throttles. Two 550 horsepower Chevy Mercury number three engines. 
Dirty Laundry is hanging in right behind them, and they've got those two 496 horsepower lightning engines, the throttle man Harold Smith out of Miami, Florida, and Joe Mock from St. Louis, Missouri. This man here has to be disappointed. Bobby Kaiser from Gross Point, Michigan. Errol Lidier is throttle man. They've teamed up on many a haul. This one has promise, but has yet to prove itself on the racing circuit so far. In the Superboat division now, there you see Popeyes with a great average speed of 81.60 miles an hour. Chuck Norris holding on literally to the lead. Bob Idoni, his throttle man. Let's listen in. Little Caesar is coming up on him. What? Little Caesar is coming up in a minute. All right, let him. The voice of Stan Ware telling Bob Idoni, the throttle man, that this boat here was coming up on theirs, but you know Idoni on those throttles. He'll play cat and mouse. He will not push it unless he has to. And Little Caesar's Pizza, though, coming up. They've gone down in the water, fix something, and come back up, and they've done a great job. In excess in fourth, they won more championship points after that outstanding performance in San Francisco, Jim. Yes, they have, and this is a good crew, a good boat, and they're going to be heard from all year long. Here's Team USA with Don Johnson, Kurt Russell, and, of course, Richie Powers at the throttles, and they're just trying for some championship points. Hold on, finish the race, get more points. And we'll be back with the finish from Long Beach, California, in just a moment. Welcome back to Long Beach. Let's listen to the intercom of the Popeyes crew. I hope you guys are clown laps. Yeah, Bob, work on him. Good. Easy now. Sounds like a crew that's out in front, doesn't it? In excess, though, making a move from their rather locked-in fourth position to move up to second. They're powered by three 850-horsepower C and G marine engines and key caver outdrives. Little Caesars Pizzas had some problems all day long. Right now, they're back in third place. They've made a game of it, though, but you can tell it's not running well. No, you've got to give credit and A for effort because they were down a couple of times. They got it going again and still challenged for the lead not too far back. Team USA. And you can tell this boat just isn't running right, but you've got to give them credit. They're holding it together to try to finish this race, something they did not do in San Francisco. Insatiable in fifth spot. Barry Roth, the owner. And Jack Clark, who designed this boat, is also driving here today. Here's your winner of, you believe this, Nicky Cutro just about led all the way to win Pro One in the Onnit boat, P70. The winner, Nicky Cutro, at a pretty decent speed at that, too. And Jim, he's got to be very happy after almost uh, maybe two years off the circuit. Yes, he's had his problems. He's had boats burn, he's had boats sink, and he's had boats that had other problems. Here's the final results on it. Number one, risky business in second place. High risk took a third and fourth. First offense, and Team USA finishing up fifth. At almost 80 mile an hour for the average. Here's the leader in Pro 2 as we check the leaderboard. Averaging 59 mile an hour, Great Adventure maintains the lead over Splish Splash and War Cry with just a short distance to go. Finish of the race now with the open division, and that's uh, chairman of the board veering off into traffic. That's uh, Thoroughbred, who's a lap down the black boat there, as chairman of the board is being pushed very heavily at the finish by special edition. Chairman at the end. Chairman of the board, the winner of the open class, and there you see coming to the picture and zooming by him in second place, special edition. The official results coming down now for the open class, an average speed of 88.73 miles an hour. The winner chairman over special edition recovery, Don Q. Crystal and Thoroughbred. Let's go to Jim in the pits. We're aboard chairman of the board and the winning team, and not only winner of open class, but winner open all. That's good speed there. Well, you know, the name of the board is chairman. It worked like a chairman today. It was the top boat. The Lamborghini engines were singing, as you heard from the ship probably. You know, it sounded different. They said, cantare a Lamborghini. Italians say <laughs> like that, you know. Here is Sabuja, the driver. Hey, here's the problem at Hurley Step. You had quite a day. You also throttled the leading celebrity boat in the wind earlier. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that, with Kathy Smith. She did a great job. I fear we just carried on to this boat and make it a sweep of the series. The boat ran absolutely excellent, and we had no problems all day. The super boat leader, Popeye's Diet Coke, has the checkered flag in sight pretty soon. He's pulled away. What a success story this could be for Chuck Norris. We'll be back to Long Beach, California with more OPT Offshore Racing in a moment.
the Superboats approach the finish line at the OPT Long Beach Offshore Race. Dick Crippen is above the lead boat right now. With the Queen Mary in the background, we're about to crown a king. Winner in the Superboat division, Popeye's Diet Coke. Now look at the guys, they're looking over at their helicopter to see if indeed they get confirmation of the win. They do get the confirmation, and in fact, actor Chuck Norris has won his first ever offshore powerboat race. And Dickie did it at an average speed of 81.2 mile an hour in excess. Second, Little Caesar third, Team USA fourth, Insatiable overall fifth. Let's go down to Art Ekman in the happy camp. All right, all right. Owner Al Copeland and Chuck Norris, the driver uh, on the victory here. Chuck uh, takes a lot of strength out there, but what a debut. Oh, it was. It's just uh, so exciting, man. Like Al said, I'm hooked now. He's got the hook. <laughs> he hooked me in. He's got the hook. <laughs> now you're proud of these guys. Oh, are you kidding me? I would tell you. I, I, the only thing is I'm beginning to get jealous now. <laughs> I can't take this. I'm jealous now. The throttle man, Bob, and it's going to be tough to keep him out of the cockpit, I know, but uh, your experiment's working back there with this old boat. Oh, it's fantastic. The crew really worked hard, and they've got to get a lot, a lot of the credit. They've, they've just been working night and day for the last couple of months, and, and the bottom line is hard work pays off. As we look at the Queen Mary, let's look at the results now of Pro 2 here in Long Beach, California, where Great Adventure wins at an average speed of 60 mile an hour, followed by Splish Splash, War Cry, Gone Again, Misbehaving. Don Johnson is back at the docks. Art's with him. Don, you just wish congratulations, of course, on a fine race. Uh, Popeyes, it's a little frustrating to see boats go around you when you know you were in it at one time. <laughs> hey, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to finish today. You know, <laughs> we've had such, um, such uh, funny things happen. You know, today was just a, a funny, weird deal happening to uh, one of our, one of our motors. So you got a we ran through. We ran 90 miles an hour on three motors all the rest of the day. That's encouraging. Uh, it's a yeah. situation you have more turnaround time now to work on this boat before the next race. Yeah, we we um, we got a little more time to play with it now and get it in shape, and hopefully uh, by the Miami race we'll be ready to cook. All right, take a look down at the Popeyes camp. Look what's going to happen. <laughs> you stand around too long with a smile on your face and a championship under your belt, and into the water you go. <laughs> and they don't care. They do not care. They are winners. One happy crew. Now well, the fans get a chance to applaud their favorite winners as well. The second race on the OPT circuit. Two on the West Coast, and now the next stop will be across the country in Miami, Florida, for the third OPT event. On this sunshiny day in Long Beach, another chapter in OPT racing has concluded, and it was an exciting, exciting race. It was. The water is more conducive to very good competition, all four classes. And as it turned out, because of different water conditions, we had four different winners in Super, Open, Pro 1, and Pro 2. It really lent itself to some exciting racing in the Open Division. It kind of serves notice that they're going to get better every race, so it's going to be really exciting in OPT. Art Ekman for Jim Hendrick and Dick Crippen saying thank you so much for being with us. The next stop on the OPT Tour, Miami, Florida. We are saddened to report Vince Madeline Sr. of Hawthorne, California, lost his life at sea. Vince was a 25-year veteran of the West Coast offshore circuit. He left a lasting impression in the boat racing world. He will be missed. The OPT Long Beach Powerboat Race has been sponsored by your Toyota dealers and their quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Western Union's new 1-800 call cash service. Now send money by phone. And by Budweiser. Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. This